Welcome to the Real Housewives of the Kingdom podcast. My name is Caroline Rogers, and I'm your host and fellow Real Housewife in the Kingdom of God. This life can make us feel overwhelmed and alone, but I know when I hear how God is walking with others through the good and the hard, it gives me courage to keep moving forward and trusting God with it all. If you have ever felt that way, join me and my guests as we chat about our life experiences through the lens of the gospel in areas like marriage, ministry, friendship, and more. My hope is that our time together will remind you, God loves you and you are not alone. Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Housewives of the Kingdom. I am so excited to give you another episode of a few of my favorite things. And today I am talking about Proverbs 31. And the specifically Proverbs 31, the wife of noble character. So this scripture in some circles may seem unattainable, or it might seem to put women in a bad light, or at least some people have said it does, but I would beg to differ. I actually think it's a really beautiful set of scriptures. It's one I've studied over my life, both with uh, friends, family, mentors, and at church through different studies and on my own. And it's really given me a lot of inspiration. And I want to tell you why. So uh, one thing that I want you to keep in mind as we are kind of walking through this set of scriptures is that this is a picture of a woman that has come to the end of her days. So it's a full picture of what a woman will be at the end of her life. So this was told to Solomon by his mother, who was Bathsheba. And that is, if you don't know who that is, so King David saw a woman bathing on the roof, and that was Bathsheba. And he had her come to him. He got her pregnant while her husband was away at war. And then when he did that, he tried to get her husband killed on the front lines. And um, it's a really tragic story. And yet King David is known as a man after God's own heart, which gives us a lot of hope in our mistakes and downfalls. But Bathsheba was a wise woman and the mother of Solomon. Now, Solomon was not the baby that she was pregnant with, uh, with the affair. Uh, Solomon came after that. So that baby actually ended up passing away. And that was incredibly painful for them um, to go through. But Solomon grew up strong and stood for the Lord for the most part in his life. He did get caught up in his riches a little bit. But this, the book of Proverbs is largely uh, thought to be written um, from him because he's been known as the wisest man who ever walked the face of the earth. And he had a lot of wisdom. He asked for wisdom and God gave it to him. And so this part is very sweet to me. I love reading through this. This is something that I strive to be. I always pray that God would just work on my heart and my character and that by the end of my life, that lovely things will be said of the woman of God that I was. So I'm going to start out with reading all the way through it. And then I'm basically going to kind of walk through each of the verses and give you just a little tidbit of why I like that each of that section or a little insight into kind of what God has taught me about each of those verses. So it's Proverbs 31, starting in verse 10, going through 31. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed in scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. 
she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. So even though Bathsheba was telling Solomon about the type of woman to look for, ultimately the woman he would look for would not have had all of these qualities. Honestly, so many of the things that are talked about in the Proverbs 31 set of scriptures are things that you kind of develop over a lifetime. And that's encouraging, you know, and yet we can always be looking to ask God to refine us and to grow as people as women of God, as people. And there are things we learn as we have our own households, as we have our careers and all of the things and tasks that God calls us to. We can grow from the time that we're young until we get older. We also could not grow, but we hope that we do, right? So I think the other thing to keep in mind is that, sure, like even when you haven't fully developed all of the qualities you will eventually develop. There are signs of those qualities in your life. And so I think that's what Bathsheba is trying to convey to Solomon is that is a woman of good character is what he should be looking for and not um, just beauty. So, you know, a wife's worth is not measured by the wealth she brings. And if you need to hear that today, it's not how much money you can bring in. It's, um, you know, not how much value you bring in terms of a business or a business partner or whatever. It is your character and how you basically manage and steward everything in your life. And that's what this gives us a really beautiful picture of. And I just really hope that this, if if this scripture has in has made you feel intimidated or has made you feel frustrated, I hope that you can look at it in a new way. So I'm going to just go through each uh, verse and just talk about the different aspects of each little section. So it starts out with who can find a virtuous wife for her worth, worth is far more than rubies. Uh, so basically she is like the most treasured thing in her husband's home. And what a beautiful thing to be that nothing else in your home is more valuable than you are to your spouse. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing. And the way that we achieve that is kind of outlined through the rest of these so that it kind of starts there. But then as we continue to walk through each of these attributes, and also, you know, even if you are not a wife, if you are just a woman of God, this is still, these are still good things to cultivate. And in your life and with what God has called you to steward. So if you're not a wife, don't um, turn this off. Keep listening. Uh, Verse 11 says the heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will, he will have no lack of gain. So be trustworthy. That is something that it's hard to gain trust, you know, and I just think that we have to be wise in how we are dealing with our spouses, within our homes, with the people around us. It's good to be a trustworthy woman. Verse 12 says she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. You know, her intentions for him are good. She doesn't hide things from him. She plays on the same team as him. So when I think about things that like would not be trustworthy and doing good and not evil to your spouse, One example that I've seen in our current society is how often there will be like reels or people will joke about hiding purchases that they've made from their spouse. And I just think that is such a sticky circumstance to get yourself in. And I know it's very culturally acceptable to joke like that, but we have to be really careful. You know, we're not meant to hide things from our spouse. When you hide something that is taking away an element of intimacy that you can have in your marriage. And so this is just something to keep in mind, even when the rest of culture is joking about it, or it feels easier to hide something, um, you know, just really search your heart and see what 
uh, what and why you're doing that. Verse 13 says she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. So flax was used to make clothing. So I know we know what wool is, but flax was used to make like linens and um, bedding and all of these things. And so this part where it says she willingly works with her hands. So you're really just, she's willing to do what her family needs so that they have what they need. And often I think uh, it kind of goes down into the next one, 14. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She's resourceful. You know, she's thinking outside the box. And so that even goes with willingly works with her hands. You know, when you think about and you might not be making your own clothes or your own bed linens, and that's 100% fine. But you maybe find a great deal on clothes for your family or on bed linens or whatever it is. And so you're willing to make the effort so that your family can be successful uh, in the ways that success matters. And so that is uh, just a really sweet way to look at it, I think. It says in 15, she also rises while it is yet night. Um, and I know that's really intimidating. I mean, some people like to get up early, but um, I'm not one of those people. Yet me and my hubby have been getting up earlier these days because that's the only time we can go to the gym. And so I sometimes think about this when it's still dark and we get up. Uh, there was a lot of years where I was not getting up that early. And so whenever I would come across this, it would kind of make me laugh. But she also rise, rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. And this whole part with the maidservants, I know that feels maybe sort of dis, like there's a disconnect there because that's not our current culture. But if you want to think about your maidservants as like your dishwasher, your car, your washer and dryer, you know, you go get laundry soap for your for your washer and dryer so you can clean your clothes. You know, you're feeding your you're feeding your maid servants in that sense, I think. Um, also, it's just all about being willing and being available if something needs to happen for your family and just being aware and ready. Um, you know, she's prioritizing her family's needs. In 16, she's, it says she considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. Despite her own limitations, like I think about the woman in this day and age who was, women were looked down upon in that culture. And yet here she is buying a field and profiting and then plants a vineyard. So she's making sure that her dealings are fruitful and that they're going to benefit her family. And I think it's really a beautiful thing to see despite the limitations of that culture of a woman being able to do that. And today we have our own limitations in our own culture. And yet if we can just continue to trust God to be resourceful with what he has given us, he will step in and help us to do that. Verse 17, she says, or it says she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. So the word gird, basically means prepare oneself for something difficult or challenging, which none of us want to do that. None of us want to be prepared for something challenging or difficult. Like that doesn't sound fun. Now, when it comes, yes, you want to be prepared, but it doesn't sound fun to prepare for something like that. At the very end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he says, you can find this in Matthew 7, 24 and 25, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. And in my opinion, the best way that you can gird yourself with strength and strengthen your arms and be prepared is for your life to be built on Christ, because that is the only way that the waves and the things that come our way that shake us, that's the only way that we won't get knocked down. And when we apply this to our homes and preparing our homes, that goes for being prepared with God as the center of your home. And that is what I think about when I think about that little portion of it. In verse 18, she says she perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. So there it is again. We talked about getting up while it's dark and we talked about her lamp doesn't go out by night. But basically she's always ready. If you've heard the story of the 
virgins that are waiting for the bridegroom to come. And there's some that have oil in their lamp and some that don't. And the ones that have the extra oil, they are prepared. And then the ones who don't, they have to run out and get more oil and the bridegroom comes and they miss out. And so this is just a good thought for us to think about to be prepared for anything and or anything that God brings your way and needs you to manage. Also this beginning part that talking that's talking about her merchandise is she perceives that her merchandise is good. And uh, I would suggest that this isn't just your make like the things that you make that you sell, but I would say to consider that anything that you produce, your time, your talents, do your best and just always be wet, ready. So it's like a quality assurance. So you're just testing to see like, where is your heart at in something? How are you spending the resources that you have and what are what are you producing and what is the quality of that that you're producing in your life. Verse 19 says she stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. So basically she got she's got skills and uh, she uses them. So again, you don't have to sew. This was just very uh, part of that society's uh, culture. Most women knew how to sew in that culture. But just because you don't know how to sew doesn't mean that God hasn't given you other skills. So it's just being ready to use the skills God gives you. Verse 20 says she extends her hand to the poor and yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. So this might mean somebody who's poor, someone who needs something that they can't afford financially. But I would also can ask you to consider the poor in spirit or the poor in encouragement or happiness or joy. There's people who are lacking something and maybe you have that thing, whatever it is, whether it's tangible or whether it is something that you can give them in your, your, with your encouragement or another skill that you have that could help somebody who is in need. Just being aware of that and being ready to help. Verse 21 says she's not afraid of snow for her household. All For all of her household is clothed with scarlet. To me, this has two meanings. Well, one, the obvious one that she was not dressed shabby and neither were her was her family. Her family was uh, well-to-do. And I would also say that that meant that she was diligent with what she did in her life and that my other side of this one that I kind of always think about is how all of her family is clothed in scarlet. What else is scarlet? The blood is scarlet colored. And so I always think about the blood of Jesus, like is my family covered by the blood of Jesus? And if that's the case, then we wouldn't have fear for our households. Verse 22, she makes a tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. And um, again, she's, you know, She's resourceful. She uh, and she is dressed well. She does not have the spirit of scarcity. Verse twenty three talks about her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. So that kind of even comes in the she does him good, not harm. Obviously, she has not hindered her husband's career. He has a good reputation. I mean, I think even if there's a good man, if he has a woman who has a bad reputation, it could really affect everything in the perception of who he is as a man. So it really is important. And her reputation, if anything, has only allowed her husband to thrive in his calling. Verse 24, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. You know, again, she's making the most of her talents and is also meeting needs in her community, which is pretty cool to think about. She's not just thinking about herself. She is providing for those around her, those in her, at her work. She is thinking about those around her. 
Verse 25 is strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. So it's interesting because clothing is something we see on people and you can often tell a lot by how someone is dressed. Someone walks out in, you know, leggings and a t-shirt and flip-flops. You can probably guess that they've been doing yoga. Somebody walks out in a uniform of some sort like a soldier or maybe they work at Disneyland and you see them in their costume and you say, oh, okay, well, I know where you work. You know, you can tell a lot. You can see if someone's in a bathing suit, they're probably getting ready to go swimming. Um, if someone's dressed up, they're probably going somewhere really nice. You can tell by how someone is dressed, what they're prepared to do or what they are getting ready to do. And so when I think about the fact that it says strength and honor are her clothing, like, can you imagine that it's just apparent by in encountering this woman that, first of all, she is not afraid of the future and strength and honor are just apparent when you see her. She's clothed in it. And gosh, that is such a beautiful thing. And uh, and I just, you know, she shall rejoice in time to come. So she's not worried about the future. And that's a hard one. We all have moments where we worry about the future and that's okay. But uh, this is just a beautiful thing to consider and work towards. Verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. So she thinks before she speaks and maybe she doesn't talk too much. That one's a little bit hard for me. Um, only opening your mouth when you need to. Even a fool is thought wise if he holds his tongue, we hear in Proverbs. So I think this is saying that she is kind in her speech and she also is wise. So every time she opens her mouth, she is speaking wisdom. Does that mean that she knows everything? No, but she's just smart about when she opens her mouth. So that's one I could use a little um, prayer and encouragement on. Okay, verse 27, she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's aware of what's going on in her home. So she's the gatekeeper and she does not stand idle while her family suffers. She creates a happy and peaceful home. So this does not mean that you never relax. This does not mean that you don't rest, but you are aware of the comes, comings and goings of your house. You're aware of the state of your house. You make good choices to keep your house in good working order, both the actual tangible things in working order and also the spiritual and emotional and mental things that go on in your home. So this is just something that she is mindful of. Verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed and her husband also, and he praises her. So her husband and children speak well of her and not under pressure, but it's just like their opinion. And, you know, a good reputation takes a long time to create, especially for those in your household. So when you think about your spouse pretty much gets like, unfortunately gets the worst of you because you are comfortable. You generally let your hair down a little bit and your kids often see that side of you too. They see your weak side. And so when this scripture is saying that her family rises up and calls her blessed, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's perfect or that she never had a flub up or that she was never rude or unkind or whatever, but ultimately God's heart in her prevailed and their ultimate opinion of her is that she's blessed. And that is such a beautiful thing. And also that her husband praises her. So it's very sweet. I mean, you, we've probably all had a moment where we fished for compliments, um, but she's not fishing for this one. Her husband just freely gives it to her and it's the sweetest thing. And that comes from taking the time to make a good reputation, not only on the outside world, but in your home doing the day in, day out of being mindful and honing your character and knowing that that's the most important thing. Not like, okay, everybody thinks I have it together, you know, outside, but in my home, I'm not. It's like that idea that you know that it, it does matter what happens in your home and you're mindful of it and you're trusting God to help you to cultivate that in your home. 29 says, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. So this isn't a works-based assessment. Uh, this is a 
the fruit of the spirit being evident in your life. So there's a lot of people who can do good things. So there are a lot of women who we in our society would deem like, wow, they are amazing. They have accomplished a lot. You might see someone who's accomplished a lot in their career or has done a lot of humanitarian work or has reached out and helped a lot of people, but you never know. And maybe they're great people and maybe they love God, but those are not the important things. It's, you know, there's, it's not, not that it's not hard to do good, but uh, it's something that just anybody can do. And it says, but you excel them all. And the reason that she excels them all comes in the next verse, verse 30, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And so that's like the total key. We can't be fooled by the world's standards of being good and beautiful. Don't waste your life on it. Don't waste your life on trying to be good in the world's eyes. But let the Holy Spirit live inside of you and slowly change you and chisel away the hard, not good parts and bring to light the beautiful parts, which is that you fear the Lord. And that is the ultimate of what we should hope for at the end of our lives. Verse 31 says, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own praise her in the gates. So results may vary. Gosh, this give her the fruit of her hands. I mean, that could be like kind of a negative thing. If you're a woman who has you know, cultivated dissension in her home. If you're a woman who has caused your children to continue to bicker with each other, if you're a woman who has created an empire outside your home, but inside your home, it's a, uh, it's a shambles. I mean, these are all things like give her the fruit of her hands. So whatever comes out of what you made important, that's what you're going to get at the end of your life, that's what you're going to get. And so what we want is that God's spirit has worked through us and that we didn't in our own strength try to become something great in the world's eyes, but we trusted God and we walked with him and we worried more about our character than we did about what other people thought. And we did it with the right motivation, not to look good, but that we could be closer to God's heart and that naturally those fruits of the spirit would just pour out of us. And then that the benefit of those fruits is evident in our lives. And so this is why I love this this whole group of scriptures. I hope it's opened your eyes a little bit to maybe have a different perspective if you felt like it was unattainable or like it didn't make sense for today's society. And uh, I just want to pray over you before we go and pray over me and pray that God would help us to be the wives and women that he calls us to be. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for these words that we can read and see what's important, Lord. It can be so hard to try to keep up and be what the world deems is beautiful. We can just wear ourselves out and really we never measure up. We can always feel like we never measure up. So Lord, thank you for reminding us that it, that charm is dece deceitful and that beauty is fleeting, but that if we are women who fear you, then we will get the benefit. We will get that peace and that blessing of those closest to us being blessed by us and feeling loved by us and their lives will ultimately be blessed and enriched because we have walked the way that you've called us to. So help us, Lord, with this. Help us to be women of, care, of godly character and help us to be wives that love and honor our husbands and that only do good to them and that are ready to work hard and take care of our households. We just give these things to you, Lord, in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, friends, I'm really grateful you joined us today. If you were encouraged, please share this episode with a friend. You can text it to them directly or just screenshot and share it on your stories or feed. You can follow us and interact with me on Instagram or Facebook. The links are in the show notes. Just remember, God loves you and you are not alone. See you next time.